Through these halls, where lovers get lost, and lust consumes the wicked. A place where reality collides with fantasy. In the pages where romance is second to none. Welcome to the Lover's Library. Hey lovers, I'm Carly. I'm Sydney. And I'm Zoe. Welcome back to the... That was like the Welcome lowest to... low-key <laughs> hey lovers Sydney has ever done. And no, I was like, it is. Uh... hey man, look, I'm tired. Well, you but better... I'm not tired of this book, so let's get into it. No kidding. Girl, tell me about it. What's the scoop? Tell me about it, honey. Today, we're covering One Call Away by Lexi Josephine. I love that name, by the way. That's a great name. Josephine or Lexi? Both of them. Because they're both pretty cool. Both of them. I like how she spells her name with a Y. I guess not that it was her choice. I'm <laughs> guessing her parents <laughs> probably picked it. <laughs> Sydney's choking. <joking. laughs> I killed her. <laughs> that is so funny. Right? Uh, Anywho. This is how this episode is going, guys. Lexi is from Canada. Yeah, Canada, girl. Maple syrup and all that. Specifically, she's from Manitoba. Manitoba. That's like the most Canadian Canadian thing. <laughs> I was like, if you ever wonder how to like speak in a Canadian accent, just say Manitoba. There's no way you can't. You have an accent. Manitoba. Manit- Manitoba. 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 It's because I'm my A's Manitoba. don't sound like normal people's No, but A's. if you were like trying to sound Canadian, trying. you could say. Probably. Do Manitoba. it. No, I'm nervous now. <laughs> we're all looking at you. <laughs> Anywho, Lexi is amazing. She is a romance author who loves snuggling with her dogs, coffee, singing, and hockey. Like, I feel like we could be best friends. Mm, I love sorry. all those things. I don't like coffee. I don't like singing in front of people, but props to Lexi because she does. Isn't that How coffee awesome. Right no, that was a smoothie. Oh. <laughs> who goes Ew. to a coffee place for smoothies? Yeah. What's the point? Anywho, I like this is chocolate. Lexi's first <laughs> book <gasps> it is her debut it's her yes. debut novel yeah. and it's so oh, i can good. cross it off my bingo hey. <laughs> i love that i love a debut novel i love that's good like this yes that's what yeah. i was gonna say They're i love so a good. debut novel where you're like oh it's their wait i like, would never I read have the known. whole thing and then i was like oh, i wonder what other book she's written and then i realized it was her first and i was like holy crap like that was a great one she's Lexi, got it you Lexi, got what it you takes girl i read this. in the um like author's note in the very end that uh-huh. uh, she wrote it over like two years. Wow. And I'm really proud of her. Yeah. Good job. You stuck through with that. Yeah, because I would have quit. She took her time and mm-hmm. like That's did why it right. you're good yeah. like this. Yeah. It's really good. Yeah. Smash. Well. <laughs> yeah, spoiler. <laughs> this book is One Call Away. It's about a girl named Stella Simone. She's a lifestyle journalist at a popular magazine place. <laughs> she is curvy. Loves coffee, and she's freaking hilarious. She I is. She's so funny. <laughs> this is another book that the internal dialogue is something that I would say yes. because she's awkward and she's funny and she isn't afraid to like be herself. And she did a lot of her like self whatever journey, um, like her growth, self acceptance. Ah, mm-hmm. That's the word. It was really great mm-hmm. all around. Five Making stars. Her- well she's recovering from a terrible relationship where just that he put her down was terrible (laughs) to her tell me about it (laughs) let me tell you about the book sorry 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 sorry. (laughs) (laughs) she's avoiding love at all costs after she writes an article about um self-pleasure her work picks up (laughs) ben daniels is her co-worker Mm. He's a sports journalist, and he has been infatuated with Stella from the moment he met her in the break room. Mm, mm, mm. Daily phone calls and lots of banter. Do they fall in love, or will their jobs destroy them? Or are they oh, no. one call away? <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Don't do it. <laughs> All right. Let's go. Lovers quarrel. Let's talk about this book. I wrote. This is immediately funny. I love the ban- banter and a lot of sexual frustration. That's yeah, why I have that on there. Girl, I, it's tense, honey. The first 
thing that I highlighted in this was a quote about Ben's arms. I know. I wrote forearms. Yes. <laughs> I think very early on we found out that Sydney likes a good forearm with the sleeves rolled up. Mm. Is that what the vibes I'm giving off? Yeah. I think I do pick a lot of those kind of books, don't I? Oh, it's I love it when they talk about it's like they're wearing a button up mm-hmm. and then you it's like tight on their, their oh. sleeves up. Mm. Scrum delicious. Oof. So good. I say that every single episode. Scrum delicious. <laughs> Some scrumptious. One of the quotes I, I, I had to do this because it was freaking hilarious. She said, I swear he rolls his sleeves up just to spite me, mm-hmm. trying to kill me with incredible arm porn. And that's what he's doing. <laughs> He knows the effects he has. I he don't does. Know. I I think he like can tell that he gets under her skin a little yeah. bit, but in the good way. But yeah. I don't think he's trying to do it sexually at first. No, at no, 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 no. I Maybe think, I feel like he was testing the waters. Yeah, I'd be like, roll those. And those babies waters out. were tested. Okay, but like, why are your sleeves down? Right. <laughs> so Put those back up. Sorry. So these two initially, they, their first like talking was he accidentally called her. Mm-hmm. at 903 he meant to call somebody else she answered mm-hmm. and that kind of started the trend of he calls her every day at 903 now ever since that one accidental phone call which she just listened she'd be like mm-hmm. okay talk about you know sports. what i feel like that's <laughs> such a beautiful way to start out for a relationship like he wants to talk to you at mm-hmm. 903 and makes a point to do that every single freaking day it's too i early. also feel like that's something that i would have done like i did something stupid and embarrassed myself so now you got to keep. So doing now that. I'm just gonna do it all the time. <laughs> I didn't I think wouldn't. about that. That's smart. I would probably never talk to you again. Right? Yeah, <laughs> me too. Uh, but they shared this one moment in the um, break room where they almost kiss, and mm. ever since that moment, they both have this like burning mutual pining desire for each <laughs> it's other. The pining, <laughs> but it's never been spoken, and they've never acted on it. I know they're so silly. But Ugh, little gooses, go get in the pond. <laughs> This, <laughs> I love that. What? She said that before. You have said that she before. has said that before. If you can find the episode where Zoe says that, we'll we'll message it. Yeah. We'll, mes- message, we'll message us. Maybe we have a giveaway. You. Yeah, <laughs> we'll send you a goose. <laughs> oh my gosh! Well, Let's from those, those from those moments and the banter that they share and the phone calls, you can tell immediately, like. He's in love. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They haven't even mm-hmm. talked to each other face to face. Practically, and it's and dual they... POV. Which yes, I love. I love that too. It really showed, like, when big things were happening to her, it was from her perspective, and when big things were happening to him, mm-hmm. it was from his perspective. Mm-hmm. Which I lo- I like. I do. I'd like rather that. have that. Yes, because I've read books where. It's something big happening to the other person Mm -hmm. and you're not getting their POV. Yeah. Yeah. And that is frustrating because or it's like something that is like really big for the plot. But I'd rather hear their voice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's especially like the I want to hear the guy's voice. Mm -hmm. Like, what were you thinking? You fucking idiot. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But this one, I feel like if we only had it from her perspective, we wouldn't have liked him as much. Yeah, for sure. So I appreciate that a lot Mm -hmm. because I really liked his. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, so the, the basis of this story is she's supposed to write an article and, uh, she's kind of trying to figure out what she wants to write and she gets this wild idea to like write an article about self pleasure Mm -hmm. in her dry quote dry spell. Um, which I feel like isn't even what it was about, but that's what other people made it about. Yeah. Because I actually really liked her article and uh-huh. i'm not one that's um like super feministy um yeah but she was like it's okay to be by yourself and to self-care by yourself mm-hmm. and to pleasure yourself however you want to do it and i thought that was really cool mm-hmm. good yeah. for her i'm glad she sent in the article i yeah. said it's so personal <laughs> I, I, never, I, would, I wouldn't be able to write that no. like, article then, at all but then it's like she's writing all this like really personal stuff yeah. and then she's walking around her office where you know everyone oh, I'd be so embarrassed yeah. I couldn't do that I couldn't do that no 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 I could it, maybe if you were like had like a work from home job and you didn't have like mm-hmm. an actual office mm-hmm. where you had to see your coworkers face to face yeah but for real they're looking at and you I'd have to write like with a, a pseudonym because yeah ain't no way I'm going by my name right uh-huh. this 
article like popped off as soon as they like they're like so mm-hmm. many clicks they were all obsessed about the clicks yeah and her friends were even like girl <laughs> right <laughs> i just couldn't believe that she wrote that but so that happens and then um uh ben wants to talk to her about the article mm-hmm. <laughs> of course but so does her boss yes mm-hmm. and her boss calls her in to come talk to her in her office and i almost said lexi because that's the author <laughs> stella is like okay i'm gonna get fired this is it yeah which is what i would be thinking too oh, yeah. yeah but that's not the case her boss is pretty excited with the article except um the higher ups are not so excited um so she tells Stella, that she can get them off her back, and the next article she should write is about ending her dry spell. Mm-hmm. Oh. There were so many things fucked up with that. Yeah. yeah. When, I felt weird about When her that. friend said, um, Dylan, he said she was pimping herself out for the yeah. article, I was like, yeah, that's, that's what exactly it, what's literally. going on. And it's sad because she's such a people pleaser that she wants to do it, but she doesn't right. want to do it for herself. Mm-hmm. Right. So I thought that was really crappy. Of she her didn't want to do it, but she felt like she didn't have a good enough reason to say no mm-hmm. right. until later. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ugh. Which we'll I mean, get it, to shows, that part. it shows the growth. Yeah. But also, I feel like, like you said, I was just like, it gave me the ick. Yeah. I would just feel mm-hmm. like disgusted with myself, but also your offer boss. Offer that to somebody and say, yeah. right. hey, I with need you to do face. this. Yes. Like, what? I was Absolutely mind blown. Not. I was like, this is, has to be a joke. There's no yeah. way. This is when you go talk to HR. Like, yeah. right? did you, no freaking do you kidding. know what they just asked me to do? <laughs> right. I'm already no, diving asked. too much. Not asked. Told. Told me. Yeah. Yeah. Valen told me. Basically to said, this will be your job. If and you I thought it was kind of like completely counter whatever to what she was writing about because she was saying like it's okay to do these things yourself right but your boss is like yeah that's great but also go have sex with somebody somebody. right and and so that made me mad yes oh no that's like a me too movement kind of situation (laughs) like yeah that made me so mad Mm -mm -mm -mm. so right before she went to talk with her boss, she ran into Ben by the elevator and he could sense something was wrong with her. Mm-hmm. Um, she was really nervous and all these things. So at the end of the day, he didn't see her again, but they end up sharing a cab. Well, he kind of forced her. Yeah, he forced <laughs> her to a little bit. But it was but so forcing cold of her. I was, did you catch the Princess Diaries reference? Yeah. A lady never slides. <laughs> I oh, thought that was so funny. That was so funny when she said that. Yeah. She's she like, was like, but I was he kind of wouldn't it. get it. So <laughs> yeah. I didn't say it, but. I was like, we all got it. Reader got it. <laughs> Reader got it. <laughs> uh, but I just really liked how comfortable and natural it felt for the two of them. Me too. Just, they seem like they just got along. And they could open up pretty easy, even though they were like trying not to open up to each yeah. other. So they were both I kind of being that. secretive. Mm-hmm. The more I learned about um, her ex-boyfriend Colton and like the things that he said and did. Yeah. It kind of made me mad. Well, I mean, it really made me mad. But also it kind of makes me mad because when you say you had like a bad ex or whatever, everyone's first question is, well, did he cheat on you? Mm -hmm. No, like people can be shit human beings and not cheat on me. Like he didn't even. I mean, he did cheat on her. Yeah. But the other stuff that he did was almost worse than the cheating because. He was that gave emotionally her messing her up. Yeah. Complex about herself. Mm-hmm. He told her uh, one of the things he said was no man is ever going to love you like I do. Which uh, is mm-hmm. so narcissistic. Well, and then he like cusses at her and tells her that she's too big. Or yeah. Too, like her body's too big and blah, yeah. blah, blah. Ugh. Literally but the you worst. Know that happens in real life. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. It's for sure. such a sad reality to like think about like yeah. that people have to go through that verbal abuse and all that i mean trigger warning for anybody who ever has gone through that but also i think for me a little bit of this book kind of drew me into kind of some of the realities in the world because of the con you know like the Mm -hmm. content and the context of what's happening and everything like that which i think is a good conversation starter Mm -hmm. for people or just a thought process starter because it gives you a little bit more of a sensitivity to people and their individual situations and that kind of thing Mm -hmm. not to get you know like super deep about it but i do i and that's why i like to read different types of inclusive Mm -hmm. romance books or just books in general because even if that's not my personal experience i want to know about it so i have context if there is a situation yeah Yeah, no i think that's really smart which i'm so glad that 
the book community is starting to become more, maybe in, I wouldn't say progressive, but more inclusive about the content that they yeah write about, mm-hmm. which I think is a cool thing that we're you know in that era of mm-hmm. kind of seeing that which develop. And you know, speaking of like we've read, we've covered other books where the um main girl character is overweight like not overweight Mm -hmm. i shouldn't say it like that like heavier or like Mm -hmm. curvy um and like i feel like lexi brought out a lot of things that i related to Mm -hmm. i was like oh my god like we'll get to it but there was like lots of stuff that i was like wow like i really liked how she it was real Mm -hmm. yeah yeah it was you could you just know it but um i wanted to talk about colton and her relationship a little bit more Mm -hmm. Just because it was a big part of her journey. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. She said she wasn't happy. He was like, you know, basically verbally abusive to her mm-hmm. and just always put her down. And she was always the one that was wrong for everything, yeah. even though she didn't do anything wrong. And, and then he ends up cheating on her and all this stuff. Um, I kind of have dug back into some old music lately. Uh-oh. Not super old. <laughs> but I lost my mind when i heard this song it's turning tables by adele i don't know if you know Hum this it. song don't know <laughs> but i will read you the lyrics because i heard this song and immediately messaged lexi and i said oh my god like this song describes her relationship with colton was it on her playlist N- no i don't know does she have a playlist yeah she has a playlist oh no. shit no, I need to find it. But I found this and I sent it to her and I was like, oh my gosh. And she was like, yes. Oh my gosh. Aww. And it was so exciting to get Wait, that. Like you sent it to Lexi Josephine. Yes. Oh, I love oh, when sorry. the authors are like, yes, like they're excited about it too. And yes. like coming, yeah, visiting. But okay. So she says, I can't keep up with your turning tables under your thumb. I can't breathe. I br- I've braved a hundred storms to leave you. As hard as you try, no, I will never be knocked down. Next time, I'll be braver. I'll be my own savior, standing on my own two feet. Mm. Isn't okay, that Stella? Adele. Is yes. that not st- like that is no, her? No, for sure. Yeah. And I mean, if you think about Adele's situation with her ex-husband, mm-hmm. it, it's a lot. There's a big parallel. Not yeah. that Lexi wrote this based off of Adele or anything, but mm-hmm. I mean, if you think about Adele and what she was going through with her ex-husband and mm-hmm. all this like music industry and all that kind of stuff, mm-hmm. I mean, I feel like they did the same thing to her. Yeah. yeah. And she was going through the same thing. So, I mean, to see Adele now and how much she's thriving and doing so well. Oh, yeah. And I mean, she didn't have to lose weight or anything to be who she is mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. But I'm just glad that she's in a healthier space. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I, I feel like, and I think it's Stella. That. Yeah, Stella definitely. Her yeah. that song character is growth not was on the playlist. Um, but now you need to add Lexi. <laughs> but yeah, there is a playlist at the end of the book, and she Why even has the Spotify that? like link. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna add that because I, oh, I love that. I've never noticed. I've only listened to one. It was Between the Blue. I was feeling that book for like three I days. I love when books have playlists. So thank yeah. you, Lexi. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we love that. What. I also loved was how funny it was to hear the um, dual point of view going back between Ben and Stella and both of their friend groups mm-hmm. knowing who the other was mm-hmm. because they had been talking I about them. I knew that. At one point, I wrote it down. Can I spoil? I'm just going to spoil. Yeah. Well, I said, I wrote, is, is Nick gay? Because I would love if he was with Dylan and they Nate. set all this up. His name was Nate. What did I call him? Nick. I wrote Nate. I don't know yeah. why I said Nick. <laughs> yeah. Because Nick Miller. Nick. Probably. <laughs> Nick Miller's but, my man. Yeah. But so I was like, that would be so cool. But I didn't really get the hint that he was gay until it like came out that he was gay. And I was like, cool. I got <laughs> Dylan. I caught oh, yeah. that. Dylan. But for sure. Nate. But Nate, I yeah. had no idea. But I called that pretty early. I was like, oh, cool. <laughs> right after the speed date thing, I was like, oh, I get it now. <laughs> uh. Well, so their friends are so supportive and great, Mm -hmm. but also a little too much. (laughs) Yeah, they were trying. They was getting each other's business. Yeah. Dylan. Can y'all just take a break a little bit? Yeah. Like that first night, Dylan and Vanessa were like pressuring her so hard to go out to the club. Yeah. Yeah. She's like, I really don't want to go. Which at the club is where she sees 
Colton. Yep. Her ex. Yes. But, and Dylan gets her tequila. Yeah. And she's like, oh, he knows it makes me slutty. Yes. I quoted <laughs> it. I said, Dylan knows tequila makes me slutty. I said, LMAO, me too, girl. Same. Me too. Tequila actually tequila? does make her clothes fall off. Right? I mean, not in this book right at that moment, but in right. real life. Why? What, what's in there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What? Why do your clothes? I mean, it happened. It's, there's got to be a science about it somewhere. But what made me mad when she saw Colton was that he didn't even like realize that it was her. When yeah, he was hitting he hit on, on her. her. Yes. What the fuck, dude? I was so mad. Like, really? He, he irked every single one of my nerves every time we had to meet him in the book. I know. I was just like, bro, can, okay, let's just get him out of this story. We got a new vocab word, though. Did we? Douche nozzle. It's <laughs> <laughs> like, what the? That's uh, funny. If we I could think... go through every single book where we had a, what? What is it? Douche nozzle? That would be funny. Because we've had uh, several. I am. Douche nozzle? I think it's Penny Reed that says douche canoe. I think you're right. She'll call people a douche canoe, and it makes yeah. me freaking laugh. There was so hard. another one in Homecoming King, that. but it wasn't that. I don't remember. Douche what it was. nozzle. <laughs> these are words that i've actually called people in real life yeah you should yeah. <laughs> in their face <laughs> oh should have done it more often but ben saves her from colton oh, he does and save. that's when they have their first spark it was so beautiful good. i loved it i said so much sexual frustration in this book so much she was a naughty little flirt when she drinks right mm-hmm. she was Is saying some things <laughs> <laughs> well we'll save that for the third date so after that night at the bar they don't uh talk to each other for several days i know what the at heck? work and i was like why she was freaking out oh yeah mm-hmm. i would too and he was like i want to talk to her but she's <laughs> ignoring me <laughs> but uh, i love a good ignore though i loved how he like knew her love language already Mm -hmm. because he knows she loves coffee obsessed i would say and oh yeah yeah yeah, for (laughs) sure and i just loved how he got her to go into the break room and he was gonna surprise her with a fresh pot of coffee but someone drank it all already those jerks he's like how the hell it's like she's office life you know yeah and he went to make her more and she's like you don't have to do that and he said i want to Mm -hmm. i was like yes he just (laughs) He was great. He was. There's something about. He like knew how to give her space, but not too much space. But to take care of her, but know she can do it herself. Like there's something about that. Like he, I feel like, you know how we say like, they're the safe pick. He just, he's not that. He's like a safety. Like he just felt safe with. It's how she. the right choice. She said something about how (laughs) she was safe with her friends. Mm -hmm. And I felt she felt that safety with him too. Oh yeah. Well, she opened up to him, to him about things that she hadn't even like told her friends yet. Mm-hmm. Right, right, right. But once they finally start talking again a little bit, they end up going on a kind of like a little date. They went to a bookstore together. I, mm. I love that. <laughs> and I love how he asked her what her favorite genre was. And she said, romance, obviously. <laughs> I feel like that should be our That's new us. tag. <laughs> yes, like, I love romance, that. Romance, obviously. <laughs> Lexi, if you give us permission, we're going to post that shit on everything. Yeah. <laughs> Making shirts. We'll send mm-hmm. you one. Right. <laughs> Romance, obviously. I, that's another thing. They would say, like, Toronto, obviously. Obviously. Yeah. They <laughs> that would, like, such, go back and yeah. forth. So I really liked that they kept doing that throughout the whole book. <laughs> what else? Oh, Stella was also going over the different character, character descriptions. And I hadn't heard these. And I was dying. Alpha hole. Oh, oh yeah. I love uh-huh. that. That's Cinnamon roll. One. I don't know yeah. what that was, but um, I stern love stern brunch hole. daddy. That's a new one. <laughs> I've heard cinnamon roll. I've heard but stern daddy, but not stern brunch daddy. Stern right. brunch daddy. I was dying. I was like, what the fuck? And then things happen. I like that she was like, "What's your favorite trope?" And he was like, "What the hell is a trope?" Right. <laughs> so a new position. This sounded like me the first time we talked about yeah, it. Yeah, you did not know what a trope was. I didn't was. know what the hell that now was. She's I was a like, trope I don't queen. Know what you're talking right. about. No, I'm the trope queen. queen. Trope so what queen. happens after the bookstore? Well, then not after, after. Dylan has... <sighs> you got a he makes her go to a speed date. And she wore a gorgeous dress that of showed gorgeous, off gorgeous, those gorgeous, gorgeous lady lumps, you know? Okay, let's talk about the lady lumps because <laughs> that is my next quote. I said... <laughs> 
I really appreciated and felt this 100% when she talked about her boobs when she was getting ready. She was talking about her dress and how she loved it. Um, but she says, I love its low cut and the way it hugs my curves, but I hate the itchy feeling I get when people stare at my breasts. Mm. They're twin targets on my body, stuffed to the brim and ready to burst. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel this. Mm -hmm. You can wear a shirt with being like a bigger busted girl like me. Like, mm. I can wear a shirt that I think is okay mm -hmm. because I don't show mine off. Like, when I mm -hmm. tell people at work that I want to get a breast reduction, they'll be like, you don't even have boobs. I was like, hey, these suckers are strapped yeah, down. For <laughs> like, I got like, you don't three know I on. have them because right. I'm not showing them to you. Right. Like, do not like them at all. But um, later we'll talk about Ben and he loves them. He sure does. <laughs> so but I cute. also thought it was funny because she does talk about how she didn't like that. But at the bar, she was trying to get the bartender's attention, and she uses them. She was using them. them, yeah. So I think it's kind of like one it's of her those. Superpower. Exactly. I think, she right. does, I think she does appreciate hers more probably than I do mine. Yeah. But still, I, I you really. You can like your boobs and still want to feel like that modesty that you're giving yourself. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. you maybe want to show them off, but when somebody's like ogling you and making yeah. you uncomfortable. Yeah. It the makes itchy you feel like it's is exactly like the best description of that. It's yeah. an itchy feeling. It Ugh, really is. I love that's that. a great Lexi. She's I love using your authorship, right? <laughs> All <laughs> these words together. Yes. It makes sense. So what happens at the speed date? Yeah, tell us about it. So she gets there and <laughs> she said she felt like Nemo getting dumped into his new ecosystem. I know, I know that was funny. <laughs> She was just like, what the <gasps> fuck? That like, is a great quote. All these people are here mm -hmm. mingling, ready to ready to do this. I just think they were so dumb. Why would you sit through that whole thing? As soon as you saw him, you should have said, you and me, let's, let's go yeah. right? to this bar. I do you we can hang how about, out. do you want to be here? No. Do you want to be here? No. Yeah. Just like, okay, let's go. Wager. My love friend wager. set me up. My friend set me up. Okay, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no kidding. I love that. That could have been solved they so should've. easily. But they needed to. I feel like it had to happen. He said, yeah, I don't want to talk about my dates. They kind of. I want to talk about you. Huh? Hmm? He said, I don't want to talk about my dates. Uh, I oh, want to yeah, talk yeah. about you. But I love how he asked her all about hers. Yeah, for real. I was like, that's not fair. It's a little jealous boy. In, you need to our, share. In our book of hers, <laughs> I, you know, I was thinking about this, like, because they, because of the speed dating. In Love Wager, it would have been so fun if those worlds could have collided. You know, like, oh, if, my yeah. gosh, that, if they had if, been the same. It's in our book of verse, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Jack and Hallie. Yeah. If they were. Yeah. Wouldn't that be funny? funny? Maybe <laughs> Jack was her. We're just going to pretend. Yeah. Jack was her date that was ogling or giving <gasps> sexy eyes to the oh other girl. Oh, my gosh. They Lynn, were. We'll just listen, pretend. Lynn. They Come were. On. It was them together. <laughs> You're in our book of verses, uh, Lexi and Lynn. <laughs> Lexi and Lynn. Wow. Oh my gosh, I love it. <laughs> well, they uh they talk. Some things happen. We're going to talk about that. Mm -hmm. Do they? We'll talk about it later. <laughs> but uh I did want to talk about more body positivity, love. Um so when she was getting ready, this is kind of rewind a little bit. Okay. She talked about putting her shapewear on. Mm -hmm. And when they get back to the uh, her apartment, things are obviously getting a little spicy. And in my head, as I'm reading this, I am panicking mm -hmm. because I know she has that shapewear on. And that stuff's hard to get off. Mm -hmm. And I'm and like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. He's going to pull that down and see that shapewear. I'm going to be like, what the fuck's this? Like, how do I? <laughs> what is and this? Now you got the line. You got the indention. Uh -huh. You know those skinny bitches aren't wearing shapewear. Mm -mm. <laughs> like, what the fuck? I... If any of our listeners are skinny bitches, I love you. I'm just <laughs> jealous. Still Don't <laughs> worry about it. It's not. We need you for the world to go around. <laughs> we do. Everyone has a place and a purpose. Mine's, I eat a lot of candy and cookies. <laughs> I don't know. It's Dead. and coffee. But no, I, I hate having, like, not having to. You don't have to. But sometimes for the outfit, you need it because it just. You know. Well, you it want makes you to be feel smooth. better. Yeah, yeah. I just feel more comfortable if sometimes. I'm comfortable. Yeah. But I'm telling you, when I get home and things start to get a little spicy, I am taking that off myself. I don't want to And it's going to take me like 10 minutes in the bathroom to squeeze it off. I'm going to make a lot of noises. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> They're grunts to get you ready. Exactly. Right. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, get this shit off of me. But Why is it so tight? It's the tension you need. <laughs> 
I just, I don't know. I just loved it though. Yeah. I it's real. I feel like she said self-consciousness creeps up my spine as mm-hmm. his fingers drag along the waistband of my shapewear. And then she says, um, he knows I'm insecure about my body. So instead of telling me he likes it, he's showing me. I know. We just need to get so I can talk about third day because I have a lot of things to say. Okay. One more thing. <laughs> she said, no man has ever looked at me in flesh toned spandex with reverence like the way Ben is right now. I mean, that was beautiful. That was like, he's the one. If your man is looking at you in shapewear like that. Yeah. He's mm-hmm. the one. And just as in love as you, mm-hmm. you know? Yes. Especially after thinking like adhering that nobody wants to be with you. Nobody likes mm-hmm. your body. Mm-hmm. And then you're thinking it all the time. That or you're you don't even heavy. like yourself. Mm-hmm. Well, and then well, this well. man is taking your shapewear off and like. Loving it. <sighs> loving what he sees underneath. Because Marry him right now. Some things right. that happen when you that's, take that off. If that's you don't know. your man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <sighs> so. Girl. We'll talk about third date with that later. <laughs> But they uh, kind of decide they're kind of <laughs> like, I don't think they decided at that point that they were going to be something, but they just continued to talk and yeah. their texting was freaking cracking me up. Yeah, it was so funny. They were just bantering back and forth. But I mean, she was right when she said they needed to text instead of email. I was like, why are you emailing these things? Right. Well, somebody in HR is reading these. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. I just loved it. It's so funny. Where I had a, I highlighted their text. Uh, oh, here it is. Uh, ben starts to feel, no, wait, no, 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 no. Oh, here it is, here it is, here it is. Stella, stop it. I glance up and meet her eyes. She looks calm and stoic. Stoic? Stoic? <laughs> <laughs> like a We're human Irish statue. Man? It makes my heart thunder. Looking back at my phone, I respond, stop what? You know what? I haven't a clue what you mean. He's such a shit. Oh, I love it. She says, stop looking at me like you've seen me naked. And he says, but I have seen you naked. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like so innocent. I but like I when they're texting in the break room and she's like sitting with Karen or whatever her name is. And uh, she says like, mm, and he or texts he, her. And she moans. Yeah. And, and he's like, he's oh, like God. you know, that was out loud, right? And she was like, oh, God. <laughs> I'd be so embarrassed. Yeah. Yes. I was like, MSC, I gotta go. excuse me. I gotta go. <laughs> and run. So I think uh, at this point, we kind of have gotten a little backstory on Ben and his last relationship because he was kind of in a bad relationship also. That girl was a backstabbing, betraying mm, little Mickey. skank. Let me tell you. She's probably really skinny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry, yeah, skinny listeners. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Stop, <laughs> Stop it, guys. We're going to lose all our skinny <laughs> listeners. Well, well uh, Nikki, <laughs> that dirty he little whore. Like, tell us what that hoe did. <laughs> so she plops right down sitting next to him in uh, while they're watching a hockey game. We find out that she is a rival sports journalist, and he immediately thinks that she's something special. Mm -hmm. She's gorgeous, funny, whatever. He's called her a smoke show, literally and figuratively. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like they're getting to know each other, cute, whatever. But he he said he was like on the verge of asking her to move in with him. Yeah. So they were getting pretty serious. At one point, he has this really great gossip kind of story that he doesn't normally do but it will really up his game in the industry and he tells her about it and she pulls it out from under him steals Steals his story Mm. and he finds out when they are sitting at a sports bar with like hundreds of tvs around Mm -hmm. and his headlines pop up and she told him that he should be proud of her. Yeah. Because that's what partners do. Mm-mm. That made me so mad. Part- How I felt disrespectful. Steal. That was no. thievery. Yeah. Like, that's girl, bullshit. how could I be proud of you? This was my work. Right. You just put your name on it. Yeah. Right. And he's like, and it was like in a really secret spot. Like, it wasn't on his work computer. It mm-hmm. was on, like, I feel like on his personal computer. Like, so she literally had to, like, be sneaky. Yeah. It was intent. And take it. Mm-hmm. Like. Mm-hmm. I just thought that was awful. Freaking bitch. But then they talk about how like that industry is cutthroat. And I just think that. Is, ugh, that sucks. Mm-hmm. So then he felt like he couldn't even tell Stella about his new one. But I thought it was a big breakthrough for him when he actually did tell her yes. about it. 
He did. Okay, so that comes to my next point. He did tell her about that. Yeah. yeah. So when him and Stella are talking, he's starting to feel like she's hiding something from him. Because at this point, Stella has realized me and him are getting serious. Like, he's going to break my dry spell. Mm-hmm. I can't write an article about him, but I'm supposed to write an article about him. So yeah. she's she doesn't want to do it, but she has never told him about this. From, like, nothing. He has Which no I idea. I don't think that it would be a big deal to him if she said, this is what happened. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. What do I do? Yeah. Because who else would understand that situation but More another writer? Mm-hmm. Right. Like, he would have been able to help her through that. Or what Especially if they were with like, what he's been hey, through. let's bullshit mm-hmm. the whole thing. Yeah, for real. Let's make it up. Yeah. That was my thought the whole time. I was like, make it up. You're yeah. a writer. And I was like, he's so on your team mm-hmm. that you don't have, like, he would have definitely helped her out Oh, of for that. sure. Yeah. 100%. Well, I did think that she was going to make it up about some other guy. Mm-hmm. And that's why they were going to have I knew, their I knew. third act breakup or whatever yeah. it's right, called. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. knew that was going to blow up in her face. Yeah. And I just didn't know when or how, but I knew it was going to be, ugh. Mm-hmm. But anyways, so he's starting to get the feeling that she's hiding something from him. But then it's, it was like the last sentence in a chapter. And he says, but then again, I'm not being completely truthful with her either. Mm-hmm. And I said, wait, what? I was like, what the fuck's he talking about? Dun, dun, dun. I, was, I think he was just meaning how much he cared about her. Actually, I thought it was because he didn't say like all of the details about his story. Right. But, but I feel like he was did. pretty open about yeah, everything. Nothing else came yeah. out after that. So I was like, what was he talking about? So mm-hmm. maybe I think he it did mean his it, feelings. Because didn't he like almost say that he loved her? Yeah, he was like, I love, talk to you tomorrow, bye. Right. Yeah, <laughs> so I think he wasn't being truthful about how much he actually cared about her. I think that's what he meant. Yeah. But my first thought was like, what the fuck? What are you hiding? Yeah, yeah for real. What's the next, what what's else the do bomb? you have? Oh my gosh. That's about to drop. But um, I'm glad that he didn't have some like terrible baggage we didn't know about. Yeah, seriously. No kidding. But they did. They got, you know, they were physical, like intimate with each other. Mm -hmm. But I loved in one point they um, were he was like, you could tell he was kind of trying to get a little spicy with her. And she's like, you know what I think sexy? And then she licked his throat and said talking yeah <laughs> it's like thank you thank you like mm-hmm. there has to be more than physical intimacy yeah mm-hmm. like you have to it mm-hmm. you could it's just it blows a relationship my mind. is built on more than just the sexual part yeah of it. Mm-hmm. if you don't have the relational actual relational yes. part of it you have just sex. nothing that's it. That's the only connection you have there. The yeah. first time something bad happens, you guys are done. Like, yeah, exactly. You don't have or that it's just backbone. A toxic to... cycle has That's why been started. The yeah. story, I really liked that they didn't have sex that first time. Yeah. Because I always feel like that happens in like movies or whatever, and then everything just seems fine. But I'm like, you don't even know each other. All mm. this is is you were like lustful, and now you're just horny all the time mm-hmm. and physical, but you've never had a conversation. Right. Yep. So. I really appreciated that this book was like horny and communication. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they definitely. Lexi, you was doing your good authorship in this. She For real. Uh, okay. So then we get to Stella decides she's like falling hard for this guy. Mm-hmm. She's like, I'm not writing this article. Mm-hmm. I'm going to tell her. And I thought to myself, Oh, it's going to be okay. Like it's Stella's going to okay. tell her no. And it's going to be okay. And then her boss said that. And I was like, man, this lady can go fuck herself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, I don't think any of this is legal. No. I Where's was like, HR? This is ridiculous. But I think I liked how they both realized on their own that they were falling in love. Mm-hmm. I really liked that. But Me then too. the fucking boss had to go and ruin it right after. Mm. Yes. They have sex for the first time. <laughs> mm. I was like, what of the fuck? Of course it's going to happen. Can you then? imagine how he felt? like betrayed yeah like i literally we literally like what were you doing did you like send the article last night when i was sleeping (laughs) you know like that's how but no for real like that's how you would feel yeah Mm -hmm. like the and you know all these lingering feelings of the betrayal that he's already been through Mm -hmm. it's just bringing all that back to the surface and now you're like i trusted you yeah with my heart i mean i don't think the article was like 
bad in yeah. any way. No. But him reading it, would you would have to feel yeah. awful. It severed that. But trust. I also want to know, because it says that the editor, um, Jeanette, her boss or whatever, mm -hmm. had changed some things. Well, it mm. sounded like, from what Stella was saying, was like, she just had notes. Mm -hmm. Like, if you've ever seen, like, authors or writer's notes it's i feel like it's just a bunch of like ideas or little chicken scratches here or there mm -hmm. so i feel like her boss did a lot of work on it yeah mm -hmm. like but to put it together he was so upset and i mean he had every right to be and the boss published it without her knowing mm -hmm. she didn't so even she, know it was like gonna go weeks in advance or something yeah. yeah so she couldn't even warn him i mean yeah. she had time mm -hmm. but she she didn't have time Mm -hmm. You know, it especially was, when you think that you're about to go in the next over the next couple of days and cancel it. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and Ben was so mad and he was trying to get out of there because he knew he was going to say something he would regret. Mm -hmm. And he just couldn't get out of there fast enough. And he compared her to his ex. I mm. would feel that way, though. I yeah. know. But. Ugh. Yeah. But she's not. She didn't steal anything from you. That other girl. She stole his trust. Unintentionally. Yeah. Smashed it all up into pieces mm -hmm. along with his heart. Yeah. Stupid. It was and all fake. She didn't never love him. It was all a lie. <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> well, they both spiral yeah. into de depression. They sure do. That man didn't shower. He wasn't eating. She was pretty much doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, and crying a lot. Crying. <laughs> Ugh, uh, poor and thing. that's when they find out that his best friend, Nate, and her friend, Dylan. Dylan are dating. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yay. So Nate and Dylan started seeing each other just like hookups mm -hmm. a couple weeks before this all. The That's very right. first article was posted like it was already happening before this. Mm -hmm. And then they realized, wait, my best my best friend's Stella. And he's like, uh, my best friend's Ben. And I've heard of Stella. And he's like, I've heard of Ben. <laughs> they're like, what the fuck? And they're like, these two need to get together. Mm -hmm. We need to do this. So they planned the speed date, mm -hmm. which is so funny. Good for them. So all of this was kind of like planned. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, that's kind of what helps them get Ben to come back around. Yeah. Is they tell him that, you know, we did this. And then um, he's mad. Everyone's mad. But <laughs> they end up being okay with their friends again. Yeah. But uh, Vanessa and Dylan help Stella to write an apology letter. Yes, which ben. I love. Me yeah. too. That and was so sweet. And I love that Stella went to her boss and she said a big old F you pretty much. She did. Told her, you're disgusting and I'm going to write this and you're going to have no say in it. Mm-hmm. And I thought it was kind of irritating that her boss never, like, felt bad until she realized that, like, her relationship ended because of her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, you like, didn't take anyone's you think was personal happen? life into account. Right. You just wanted the clicks. And she literally said in the article, I'm falling for this guy. Mm hmm So what did you think was going to happen? And you posted it without my knowledge. Yeah. And what do you think is going to do to this dude? And I feel like... An article is never worth somebody's mental health. No. Ever. So, I In mean. In the real world, the... that bitch is getting sued. Oh, man. yeah. A hundred percent. And then it's going to go on TikTok, and then you're going to lose and your job. And then Ben <laughs> and Stella <laughs> are going to spend the rest job. of their yeah. lives on an island. Yeah. Having With the sex and drinking suit. pina coladas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're never going to have to write an article again if Period. they don't want to. <laughs> they do it for fun now. <laughs> yeah, for real. But. So she writes the letter. He finally sees it, mm -hmm. comes to her, and they kind of make back up. But yes, the one part that I really liked was um, when he, so he comes back and he's holding coffee for her. And uh, she's like, is that for me? He's like, yes, I hand her one. And she immediately brings it to her lips. Mm. It's extra hot. <laughs> she blurts, jerking back as if the coffee's wronged her. It reminded me of anyone but you when he makes her the grilled cheese sandwich. Oh yeah, she takes it off. He takes it off the pan and puts it on the plate, and she immediately puts it in her mouth. And he's like, he was just saying, "Be careful, it's hot." Yeah, and she like, like, "You just saw me take it off the stove." Yeah, what are you and doing? then she's like, <laughs> "I was like, oh my gosh, that's just like that." I loved it. It's in our book of verse. Yes, it is. we love it. Was it. Perfect. 
But um, we've read so many books that we actually have a book of hers. Mm-hmm. That's how amazing we are. And we're the librarians in it. We oh. are. <laughs> we're just watching all these people from our bookstore. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have one more quote before third date. If you guys have anything else, oh, no, I'm good. You good? Go give me this quote. No, girl. okay, I'm good. It was one of the last things she said was, I'm not scared of falling in love. I'm scared of losing it and having to live without it. Mm -hmm. Oh, Mm. she did say one thing that was like, she kept saying that she couldn't like when he would say, just give us a chance. She would say, I can't. And I don't know. And whatever else. Mm -hmm. And she said something similar to that about how she couldn't survive if it like didn't work out between them. Mm -hmm. Like that hurts to think about. But it's so true. Mm. Everyone's felt that way. Well, not everyone, mm. but you know what I mean. Yeah. Did you guys read the epilogue? Yes. I sure did. Did you, Sydney? Mm. You would know because it's right up no, your alley. I don't think I did. We got Sydney, a proposal. Come on. Sorry. We got a proposal with coffee. Coffee. <gasps> tell me about it. Right. <laughs> Please tell me. About he puts it. the, he hid the ring in his coat that was hanging up and he picked the ugliest coat of course. so that she would never <laughs> notice it. And uh, then he went to make her coffee one morning and he put it inside of the, an empty coffee mug. And then he took it to her and got down on one and knee. But she was so excited about the coffee that she didn't notice him at first. And then she realized it was empty and she's like, it's not in here. <laughs> and then she sees him and she's like, oh my God. Yeah. Oh my God. And the coffee mug said mine because that's yep. all he wanted her to be. Mm-hmm. Oh, but oh here, if you God. like that, listen to this. I'm this listening. is. Oh, and it was in his perspective. The epilogue was. Mm -hmm. No, it wasn't. Mm -hmm. Yep. It was. He said, (laughs) she's sunshine and clouds, starry skies and sleepless nights. She's the person I want to give my everything to. Oh, beautiful. Even though it scares the hell out of me. He said that part. But I liked the. I was like, I love love. (laughs) So good. I love love. Lexi. Lexi. (laughs) <laughs> Miss Josephine. Let me tell you something. You was doing your good authorship in this she, one. I, I cannot good. believe. Why like, would you? Knowing that this is her debut after like really liking this book and mm-hmm. then after talking about all the things I really liked about this book, I still don't believe it. You're amazing. I'm yeah. proud of Lexi. Me too. Because this book would be very vulnerable to write. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of things in here that are like. Especially if she was basing her past relationship with Colton off of like something that happened in her own life. Mm -hmm. Well, even all the spicy stuff, I guess we could do third date, pre third date, Mm -hmm. point five, third date. I could never write a spicy book. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, oh my gosh. Like if for this to be her first book and she like killed it. Yeah, she did. So this is awesome. Again, the perfect amount of spice for this book. Yes. Third date. Third date. So much play, so little penetration. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I just had to say it. Uh, oh my! <laughs> I loved it all. Well, I, I just mean, she it was wrote funny. an article about self pleasure, so yeah, obviously, so it's all like, and she was vulnerable talking about her vibrators and all that. Mm, I would die. Never, I could never, 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 ever. Yes, Ooh. I well, did a lot of highlights for this third date. Just to like read the little highlights. Do you have anything like specific, specific? So I don't know what mine. I really didn't do like specific parts or anything. I just wrote down the third date happenings, like when they okay. were in the club. Okay. And after the club. Well, what part was? I think this was at the club, which is from the TikTok. He says, "My hand reaches out to grasp her hip, pulling her closer, so I can cup her jaw and brush her cheek with my other hand." Hmm. <sighs> I love that. I highlighted it. I do too. And then I made Adam do it to me. And I like that he like <laughs> yeah. liked her hair. He was always pulling on her hair and mm-hmm. stuff. Mm-hmm. So, okay. If you don't know, if you're not on our um, TikTok, uh, Carly and producer Adam reenacted <laughs> the, um, the, whoa, that the one. grab, the grab and hold them. The pull. <laughs> and when he tried to kill me and almost pulled me over. <laughs> Well, anyways, well, there's one point where she's like, we can't because it's just everything is complicated. Mm -hmm. And he just says, uncomplicate it. Right. And that's all I wanted to say this entire book. Mm -hmm. Right. Uncomplicate it. Yeah. I love that. And it's in your head. That's 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 like 99% of the time when things Mm -hmm. are complicated. It's because you're overanalyzing everything or 
making it. <laughs> I'm so hungry. <laughs> oh no. You need Eat some peanut m and ms <laughs> No, because it will make me sick. <laughs> um, anyway. <laughs> so I thought it was a hot mess when he came into her cubicle and he licked her ear. <gasps> oh yeah. Mm-mm. Boy, never. we are at work. What? We're going to have to leave right now. Ear. The children. I can't. That's not sexy to me. <laughs> don't. Uh, 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 uh. No, 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 no. Not in the public places. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> People are coughing here. Places. You get back to me when someone licks your ear the right way. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. If you, if you, future person, if you, <laughs> don't you dare lick my ear. I, will I feel like you you're picturing it like a. Uh, 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 don't. Ew. <laughs> that's not what it's like. That's mm. not what you do. Don't, don't reenact it for me. It's okay. <laughs> Listen, if that's, if you into that, be into that. I'm not, I don't feel like I'm into that. Don't lick my ear. Okay, let's talk about boobs. Okay. <laughs> so okay. next party part. Ben. Ben is like infatuated with her boobs and he 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 names them. He says, Hello beautifuls. Yeah. <laughs> like he says it. And it reminded me of Schmidt and Cece on New Girl where oh, he God. names her boobs. Yeah. And he's like, he names <laughs> he names them Harold and Kumar. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Harold Kumar. <laughs> After oh, sure. he, wait, she says, she says they're just boobs, and he says, "Don't talk about them that way." <laughs> that's a, that's such a Schmidt or that's Nick line. Yeah, it is. Schmidt. That's a hundred percent Schmidt. Oh, I was like trying to keep the third dates in chronological order, but I get a little scatterbrained. Mm-hmm. But I think after he finally like talks to her in her cubicle, they go to the bookstore. Mm-hmm. And they're like making out in the shelves. Oh no no! He found her in the coffee shop. She was working in the coffee shop. On yeah, her but I article. mean, like the third date. They didn't make out in the coffee shop. They made out in the bookshelf. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. In the bookshelf. <laughs> <laughs> they damn near knocked the thing over. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I kind of thought that might happen. Oh, wouldn't that have been funny? You want to talk about FaceTime? Oh, hold on. I did not expect that. Mm, girl. <laughs> At all. Mm-mm. well up until this point Happy everything blush. has been what do you even call that what surface surface touching <laughs> Heavy. Ed- no they were doing the damn thing edging no. everybody was finishing like our, what, what what book was that everybody was having happy oh, endings remember. minus the penetration yeah <laughs> we were all finishing we weren't finishing no, the, but this ties in <laughs> This ties in. They were talking about something, and uh, he he said, "Baby, this isn't deep." He kisses mm. my neck. Mm. I can go much deeper. Oh. You'll know it when you feel it. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> "Oh shit!" There were so many parts in this book where, like, my cheeks were hurting because I was smiling, and like my face was so hot, I was getting flustered. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it was like if you if you walked, you're like. Just like, whoa, yeah, whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa. my face is hot right now. <laughs> like, where am I? Oh, oh, okay. Sir. <laughs> I got another funny one, though. Okay. <laughs> when they're, uh, whenever Ben is about to come. <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> the, way, the way it's on here and the way I read it in my head. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, no. So oh, no. Funny. Buckle in, guys. Okay, I got to prepare myself for my acting debut. <laughs> know if i can do it is this when he says god fuck yeah he goes, i knew it jesus fucking christ stella that was so ah, <laughs> <laughs> the way i read it in my head it's not oh, like a oh, oh, fuck. Oh. like <laughs> the way <laughs> the way i read it is that he is completely so surprised <laughs> about oh, what is happening <laughs> this book was so good <laughs> but the way i you know how sometimes you read yeah. stuff and you're like not you yeah. have to read it a second time because you realize you read it the first time no, in not the right way uh-huh. so you kind of read it the second time to get the right like, picture rewind. of it there's also sometimes where i'm like not in a spicy mood at all and i read something and it's so like i'm just not into it at yeah. all and so i'm just like 
Oh, uh, fuck. Oh, yeah, that feels so good. <laughs> that was so, oh, fuck. Oh, my God. Lexi, oh, this my is God. not, this is all me. This is not you, honey. This is me in my. Oh, uh, that is Schmidt. Funny. That's Schmidt. That would be Schmidt. Mm-hmm. Oh, that was a good laugh. That was a good one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. And then, I don't remember, was this after they had sex for the first time? I think it was. And she says, is that all you've got? Mm. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was like, damn, girl. Speaking of Schmidt, though, there's at one point Dylan is like, when they finally meet Ben, Dylan's asking her how big it is. And I just see Schmidt in my head when he's like, tell me when. Seriously? <laughs> are you are you serious? Oh, yeah. The episode <laughs> where that's what Dylan he wants to doing. see. He wants to see it, uh, Nick's penis yeah. because everyone else has seen it. Yeah. Except oh, for that's him. A good episode. And he's like, what if you die? And the only way to identify you is by your penis. And I've never seen it. And I'm the only one that can identify you. <laughs> uh, can you tell I've watched that series a lot? I watched it today. Uh, and that it's late. I watched it all morning today, actually. Well, the last third day I have is when they are FaceTiming. And she's like, I've never done this before. And so you think that she's not going to do it. But then she just says, like, tell me what to do. And he does. I was so surprised. Mm-hmm. And then when they're finished, Nate is like, you're not quiet when you're uh, oh, yeah, in there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I would die. Oh, my God. I would have God. immediately turned yeah, around no. and walked out. I'm like, I no. have to move out now. Goodbye. Yeah. Jumping off balcony. On Zillow. <laughs> he just opens the balcony doors. For some reason, I pictured them in an upper level and he has a balcony. Just open the doors and girl. walk right off. Goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> Goodbye. Cannot. <sighs> or Nick when he falls on the bed. Mm-hmm. When he just walks up to it and just face plants. Mm-hmm. <laughs> for sure. Guys, are you ready for Fuck, Mary Kill? Yes. I request to not go first because I forgot my guy's name. Okay. And I don't have my phone. Okay. Producer Adam. You go first, You're going to have to investigate while she's... Um, I would F... I don't know. I'm, s- I'm just going to say Ben. Mary Ben. Oh, wait. I do have their names. Kill... Her ex, Colton. Yes. And my best friend, I think, would be Vanessa because I really like Dylan and Vanessa, but Vanessa is more of the friend that I would have nowadays. Mm-hmm. And Dylan's a little too party exciting for me. Right. Hmm. It's got a lot going on. Mm-hmm. I said, fuck Ben, marry Ben, mm-hmm. kill Colton. Mm-hmm. We can throw Nikki in there too. Yeah. Fuck that bitch. (laughs) And then my bestie would be Vanessa. Okay, mine are the same as you, Carly. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm gonna change this the editor, the Nikki, the editor lady, the Jeanette. So to kill. Yeah. Oh, see, I I thought her at first, Jeanette, Jeanette, or Mm -hmm. whatever her name was. But at the end, when she told her what happened. She like came around and I think she did feel bad. Yeah, yeah. no, 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 no. Still don't like her. Cause why was an HR? Maybe okay. Maybe not her. Maybe the higher ups that were forcing the hands. Well, I think that was all her idea. She had a self. Well, then I'm stick with my answer. Yeah, Jeanette. <laughs> you can yeah, kill her, and I'll kill Colton. And then I'm I'm going for Dylan. Dylan might might be a theft. Forever. No, I like him. That's fresh. Maybe I need a little more party in my life. <laughs> yes. You ain't got time for that. I don't. Well, this is my party. speed date. Sleeping baby. Did you pick chest. anybody for speed date? Yes. Sydney, I know you didn't. It's okay. Uh, y'all know I don't. Do you want to go first or you want me to? I'll go first. I like watching okay. them on the screen. Yeah, we um, have a computer. I picked Tom Welling for Ben because he has curly brown hair and blue eyes. And, oh, but he like Superman? No. In that one show? Well, he, Smallville? Yeah, 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 yeah. And I mean back in the day. I don't mean right now because he's kind of old. Mm-hmm. Um, and I then for my Stella, I picked Ashley Graham, who is a model and she is banging hot. Have we is picked this... her for something else? No. I think so. Ooh, I oh, love her wow. too. Is she not Striking. gorgeous? Yeah, she's really pretty. My gosh. God, she's so pretty. <laughs> Okay. Do you have anybody else? Nope, that's all. Okay. They would look good together too. 
Well, put my two together. Uh-oh. I picked Travis Kelsey for no. Stella. Stop! <laughs> I don't even like him that much. <laughs> okay. Oh, well, she's cute. That's Vanessa. <gasps> Stop don't. it! You're spoiling my stuff. <laughs> the producer is ruining all my things. Okay. Keep going. Keep I'm going. gonna get rewind here. Sorry. My Stella is Adele, circa like 2011 to 2016. Okay. We do love Adele. She was a curvy, curvy gal. She's still curvy now, but curvy she's vixen. She's bigger then mm-hmm. and i feel like she fits perfectly and then i cheated for ben um because i was i i was <laughs> scrolling through lexi's instagram uh-huh. and i saw that she had posted her inspiration for i ben. love when they do that though and she picked brady irvin huh. i've never heard of him before is he a model is he a movie star He's handsome as hell. He is very um something. Picture of his of his what? Face. <laughs> that one of his face. Right <laughs> there. Yeah, yeah, that. Okay. Right. Okay, Mr. Irvin. Yes. Mr. Brady. He intimidates me. What is he from? He's, He's just an Instagram, Instagram hottie. hottie. <laughs> okay, okay. Now, well, Lexi's... can I see the suit picture? Yes. That's it. Very I mean, nice. That's him. He is on IMBD. She got it. Hmm. <gasps> he mm. likes dogs. Okay. He's in commercials. Oh. <laughs> he's well, good handsome. For him. Yeah, he's, he's he is my pick. Nice looking. But um Lexi's choice for Stella was a model that she had seen in her um in some like catalogs that she had looked at. Oh really? At. Yeah. I love that. From some, one of the stores that she likes or but um okay, Vanessa. <clears throat> at one point she tells her fiance to piss off and it made me think instantly i was like british <laughs> and so i was like what's a british actress and then i found lucy how do you say that boynton mm. that's her i don't know how to say her name though lucy boynton <laughs> is that a t yeah i think i wrote that a t <laughs> something like that she's real cute yeah, Short that. blonde hair. Yeah, that, cut. that lipstick looks great on her, actually. Yeah, it's not, not a color I would pull off. Yeah, no. it is Boyn- B-O-Y-N-T-O-N. Boynton. She's a British actress. Boynton. She's British. Yeah. Thought she'd be a good Vanessa. I like her hair short. I think I feel like that fits her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It does. Ooh, look at her in the long red hair. <laughs> I have trivia. Ooh. Would you like to do some? Oh, no. Yes. Here we go. No, Sydney, this one's really easy. You got this first one. I don't. I won't say it. What time Adele. does Ben call every day? 9.03. Good job. You did it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I got it. <laughs> what is the web page or brand or whatever that um, she works for? Neon. Neon light. I don't Bean. know. Beat. 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 Yeah. <laughs> I was close. Um, what is Ben's ex-girlfriend's name? Nikki. Nikki. What was the... Okay. Um, Stella had three articles. Can you name any of them? No. The... Was it the dry spell? What'd she call it? The first one. The first one? Yeah. Let's get loud. Okay. Let's get loud. I only remember the last one, and it was... Golden boy, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. The second Such one was say name. goodbye to dry. Okay. Mm. Where does Ben live? Canada. Well, yes. Toronto. <laughs> and one specifically. I don't when know. When they were in the taxi. They lived in the same area here with Nate for right now. Mm-hmm. All his apartments. But she said, remodeled. where do you actually live? And he said. No idea. West Queen West. Yeah. What temperature does Nate keep the apartment? Freezing. Uh-huh. Very cold. Like an ice cube. Like a 68. Celsius. 65. He said oh. it in Celsius. Yes. Ugh. Now y'all know I That was my... Seven. What was it? 19 uh, degrees. Yeah. Which I learned is 62... 66.2 degrees Ooh, Fahrenheit. Boy. Yeah, that's pretty cold. Uh-uh. Um, mm-hmm. What are Stella's go-to drinks? Tequila. Gin and tonic. Yes, yes, and the obvious. Coffee. Coffee. Oh. <laughs> what was Ben's lunch that he couldn't finish when he was staring at Stella? Peanut butter 
and banana sandwich. It sure was. I was going to say PB and J. Um, she said she did mention he brings in a lot of pre-made, like the ones that you can buy pre-made mm-hmm. peanut butter jelly sandwiches. Like the Uncrustable. What I think series so. <laughs> did what TV right. series did Ben suggest they watch? <sighs> It's on the tip of my tongue. Brooklyn Nine-Nine. It sure was. I love that I show. I love that show. <sighs> so okay, good. and last one. Who was the scandalous hockey player that Ben was writing about? Number 22. What was his name? I don't know. His name was Buckley Cummings, and she wrote another book about him. <gasps> no. It sure did. What? Well, I think in the end she said, um, want to know more about Buck's story coming in 2023, and it's 2024, so I'm assuming it's out. Let me see. I'm going to do some investigation. It's not out. I thought it was funny that his last name was Cummings. She's posting a lot about it. I saw a lot of hockey post stuff. I don't think it's out, though. I'm going to do my double check. Well, while you're looking, what is a smasher pass? Smash. 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 Do we have a happily ever after? Yes, it's the um, it's your pick. I know the name. I don't remember the author. I can. Jamie Wait. Wesley. Here, I'm gonna bake it go to, to you. Bake it. I'll go to our Facebook or Instagram. We have two for February, mm-hmm. but our next read is "Fake It Till You Bake It" by Jamie Wesley. It's gonna be good. Fake it till you bake it. Alrighty. Oh, it's my turn. It is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. That concludes the end of this episode. If you want to follow us on any of our socials, we are Lovers Library Pod on Instagram. We have a Facebook page if you want to join and see any of the cool and exciting things like Penny Reed seeing us and commenting about us and sharing about us on her Facebook. But if you want to follow us on our Facebook page, we are Lovers Library Podcast. And then we have a Facebook group for our book club, which is Lover's Library Book Club. We are also on TikTok where we have fun videos. And one of the videos is based off of uh, this um, book. And Lexi actually commented on that. So that was fun. Um, But if you want to follow us on TikTok, it's Lover's Library. Lovers.library.po. Thank you, guys. And we'll see you next time. Happily ever after. Bye. Bye.